Good morning. Good morning, Bookie Monsters. Hi, my name is PK. I am the Bookie Monster. This channel is called the Bookie Monsters, and we are here to look at new releases each day of the work week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We missed yesterday because I did not have any power. I apparently went out at 4.30, and um, by all calculations, it came on sometime after 8, maybe 9-ish. We weren't here, but um, I could not get on the internet or anything, so Sorry for missing yesterday, but today we are going to look at the romances that we would have looked at yesterday. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Hope the roads are okay today, PK, and that you allow extra time to get to work because of them. Yep, definitely. It is nasty out there. And I think the temps are in the teens right now. We might hit 20. Um... So definitely going to be wearing warm layers. Good news is I am driving my own vehicle. So um, I have better better um, operating. The pickup yesterday was bad. Did not like it. I had to use the shop truck and there was no weight in the back. So I was fishtailing all over the place unless I was going about 25 miles an hour. Yep, looks like it says it's about 16 degrees out tonight. And we're going to get about two degrees warmer. Woo! But uh, the scary part is um, the first storm of the season. People don't really remember how to drive in it. So they're not necessarily extra careful like you are. Um, but with the snow, maybe this morning will be a little easier because with snow, there's traction. Yesterday, it was just... Hi, KJ. Good morning, PK and Mary. Off work today, so able to join. Oh, that's fantastic. I wish I could be off work. He said, hi, nice to see you here this morning. Let's jump in this. A heat wave. How much? We only got maybe an inch-ish, maybe two. Of course, higher elevations got more. But um, Billings is actually the banana belt of Montana. But we still get some things. Anywho, no fun. But it is what it is. Looks like next week we might hit some 40s by the end of the week. So it'll be nicer for a little bit. Okay. Let's look at some romance. Let's heat up with some romance. Where are we at? We are at, yeah. Hell of an Angel by Christy Barth, second in Unlocking His Heart series. Raised in hell, living in Buffalo, and on the verge of accidentally destroying both realms, Dark Angel and actuary Evangeline Thayer hates taking unnecessary risks, but she knows becoming human will be worth it. All the creatures in hell have bullied her about her negligible power her whole life. And don't get her started on why she has wings if she can't even fly. She just needs a teensy bit of help with removing her power, which is where a very hot, very flirty, and absolutely infuriating Nephilim comes in. Half-Angel Gideon Durand has been fighting demons a long time, but he's never heard of a dark angel. Least of all, one this gorgeous, stubborn, and with the power to completely nullify evil. Maybe in hell, that's a weakness, but with an unknown evil on the loose and murdering the film, that's a damned useful skill. So Gideon strikes a deal with Evangeline. He'll scratch her wings, if she'll scratch his. Now good and evil are temporarily working together and might even be having steamy fun if it wasn't for a rather inconvenient threat trying to unleash the apocalypse once and for all. Oh, inconvenient. Whoa. Hang on. A bit, a bit wonky on that one. Let's try that one in a new tab. Good morning, Rebecca. It's raining there. Okay. So just enjoying a cup of coffee and checking out the books. Fantastic. That sounds like a lovely way to spend the morning. 
Too Far by Sylvia Day, second of the Blacklist series. You can't believe all of them, but can you trust any of them? Lily Black has pre was presumed dead for years. Now she's back in the unquestioning arms of her loving husband, Cain. Where she's been remains a mystery, but her past sins haunt her and bring deadly danger into the lives of the family. Meanwhile, Aaliyah, Cain's mother, has worked hard for her position of power. She has never believed Lily, who is who she says is who she says she is, and will stop at nothing to expose her. Amy, Kane's sister-in-law, has always been a pawn in the dangerous games this family plays, but she knows she deserves more and will do anything to claim the biggest prize. Three women fight to outrun their paths, but could they have have more in common than they think? Okay. Have read Sylvia Day previously. Been a while. Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake. With a herring. Okay, sorry, Monty Python. A fake relationship after a horrible one night stand is anything but an act in this witty and heartfelt new romantic comedy. Everyone around Iris Kelly is in love. Her best friend, best friends are all coupled up. Her siblings have partners that are perfect for them, and her parents are still blissfully married. How dare they? And she's happy for all of them, truly. Iris doesn't want any of that dating love romance. She'll stick to her commitment-free hookups, thanks very much, except no one in her life will just let her be. Everyone wants to see her settle down, but she holds firmly to her no-dating rule. There's only one problem. Iris is a romance author facing an imminent deadline for her second book, and she's completely out of ideas. Perfectly happy to ignore her problems as per usual, Iris goes to a bar in Portland and meets a sexy stranger, Stefania, and a night of dancing and making out turns into the worst one-night stand Iris has had in her life. To get her mind off ev everything, Iris goes out for the lead role, because she's <laughs> okay, a queer retelling of a local play, a queer retelling of Much Ado About Nothing, but comes face to face with Stefania, whose real name turns out to be Stevie. Desperate to, save face, desperate to save face in front of her friends, Stevie asks Iris to play along as her girlfriend. Iris is shocked, but when she realizes the arrangement might provide her with some much-needed romantic content for her book, she agrees. As the two women play part of a happy couple, lines start to blur, and they're left wondering who will make the first move. Seems like a lot in one book. Emergency Contact by Lauren Lane. Catherine, an ambitious New York City attorney, gets diagnosed with a concussion and must be monitored for 48 hours to make sure it doesn't get worse. Unfortunately, she forgot to update her emergency contact, so the person they call is her ex-husband, Tom. Unable to be left alone, Catherine reluctantly agrees to travel to Chicago to travel with a concussion with Tom for the holidays, but thanks to a blizzard, what she should have what should have been a quick plane ride turns into an antagonistic overnight misadventure that stirs up old feelings even as Tom prepares to propose to his girlfriend on Christmas Eve. A delightful meet cute between the proposal and planes, trains, and automobiles, etc. Medically, I don't think that's the right thing to be doing. King of Greed. This is probably a fantasy romance, but we'll look at it. I recognize the author. Maybe we should save that one for fantasy tomorrow. We'll save that one for fantasy tomorrow. If they remember to include it. Shadows of You by Catherine Coles. Fourth in series. Kindle Unlimited. It was supposed to be a fresh start, a small town where I could hide my little girl from the shadows that haunt us, a place where I could keep us safe. The last thing I expected was him, a surly broody mountain of a man who helps me who helps me save an injured deer in a snowstorm. Now Ron Hartley keeps showing up with his glowers and grimaces, but they only make his rare smiles and the gentle way he talks to my daughter 
mean that much more. When forces from my past find us, Rowan is determined to keep us safe, even if that means sleeping on my ancient couch every night. As days turn into weeks, his touch has my walls crashing down. But someone out there doesn't want me to find happiness. He doesn't want me left breathing at all. That's it. Tis the damn season <laughs> by Kimmy Freeman. Told in a dual timeline and inspired by Taylor Swift's song of the same title, is a charming new contemporary romance. You know, you've already kind of lost me, but we'll see what, if you can pull me back in. A Hollywood starlet caught in a scandal, the boy she never got over, a Christmas season they'll never forget. Aspen Moore is living proof that money doesn't buy happiness. At 23 years old, the singer-actress has it all. Fame, fortune, her own headlining headlining tour. I wonder, hmm, what did it sound like? And yet something or someone is missing. When a scandal rocks Aspen's carefully constructed Hollywood life, she's forced to return to her Pennsylvania hometown, where she reconnects with her first love, Roman Torres. Aspen knows they must keep their relationship strictly platonic. This game of push and pull, catch and release she plays with Roman is bad for her. She's not staying in Furtsville, and he's not moving to L.A., but their chemistry is undeniable, and amidst rumor and drama, the bright lights of Hollywood begin to pale in comparison to the dark brown eyes she fell in love with all those years ago. Could Aspen be willing to give up everything she's ever wanted for the best thing she's ever had? I bet they find a way to get both. And that's just me. Oh, what the heck? Let's look at that fantasy romance. It's Thursday. King of Greed, third in the Kings of Sin series by Anna Huang. He had her. He lost her. And he'll do anything to win her back. That's pretty much romance. Powerful, brilliant, and ambitious, Dominic Davenport clawed his way up from nothing to become the king of Wall Street. He has everything, a beautiful home, a beautiful wife, and more money than he could spend in a lifetime. But no matter how much he accumulates, he's never satisfied. In his endless quest for more, he drives away the only person who saw him as enough. It isn't until she's gone that he realizes there are maybe more to life than riches and glory, but by then it may be too late. Kind, intelligent, and thoughtful, Alessandra Davenport has played the role of trophy wife for years. I guess this isn't a fantasy. Um, she stood by her husband while he built an empire, but now that they've reached the top, she realizes he's no longer the man she fell for. When it becomes clear that she'll always come second to his work, she finally takes charge of her life and puts herself first, even if it means leaving the only man she's ever loved. But what she didn't count on was his refusal to let her go or for him to fight for their marriage no matter what it takes. I did like the cover. What are your guys' thoughts? Anything interests you? And good morning to Scorpio. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. That's it for, hang on a second, copies required. Ooh. I suppose we could check out some fantasy since it is Thursday. While I'm bringing up a, uh, a site for that question. Uh, reading sprints on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're supposed to be doing one tonight. Um, I'm just concerned about the roads. I'll do my very best to get here at uh, the start time. If I'm a little late, does that mean you guys, does that irritate you? Do you want to, I'm still looking at options. So let me know what you think. 6.05 start time is with good roads and so forth. But last night I didn't get home until um, 5.40 my time, partly because I had to scrape the car and partly because traffic was very slow because of the roads. So I'm still looking at options. Like maybe I 
could do it from work and then drive home at eight. We could, uh, Kyo might be able to get by with a shorter walk. That would be ideal. We'll see. I'm going to try that tonight. Galaxy Jones and the Space Pirates by Brianna McDonald. This is a middle grade science fiction. Galaxy Jones lives on the very, very edge of a star system in an inn run by her dads. She loves her home and her little family, but ever since the train station that serviced their part of the universe went defunct, tourists have start, stopped coming and Lexi's on the verge of losing it all. When the royal family stops at their inn on the way to a neighboring star system, Lexi's dads hope for some good business, but Lexi knows from past experience with spoiled Prince Weston and his annoying dog Comet to expect nothing but trouble. Turns out that trouble is a whole lot bigger than she anticipated. Weston has stolen something. Even worse, he's stolen it from notorious pirates, former followers of Lexi's idol, the famous pirate Astro Bonnie, who have tracked him straight to her house. Problem is, Weston has lost the trinket somewhere in deep space, and now the pirates are holding all the adults hostage with the threat of destroying the inn if they can't find what they've come for. Okay. The Innocent Sleep by Shannon McGuire. For one bright shining moment, Tybalt, King of Cats. So we're doing a uh, Romeo and Juliet take here. Had everything he had ever wanted. He was soon to set his crown aside. He had married the woman he loved. He was going to be a father. After centuries of searching for a family of his own, he had finally found a way to construct the life of his dreams and he and was looking forward to a period of peace, or at least as much peace as is ever in the offing for the husband of a hero. Alas for Tybalt and his domestic aspirations, fate and Titania had other ideas. His perfect world had been complete for only a moment when it was ripped away to be replaced by hers. Titania, fairy's summer queen, mother of illusions, and enemy of so many he holds here, has seized control of the kingdom, remaking it in her own image an image which does not include meddlesome shapeshifters getting in her way. Tybalt quickly finds himself banished from her reality along with the undersea and the rest of the court of cats. To protect his people in his future, Tybalt must find the woman he loves in a world designed to keep her from him, convince her that he's not a stranger lying to ruin, trying to ruin her life for no apparent reason, and to get her to unmake the illusion she's been firmly enmeshed in. And he'll have to do it all while she doesn't know him, and every unrecognizing look is a knife to his heart. For Tybalt, King of Cats, the happily ever after was just the beginning. They could have used other names and still had a good fantasy story. Be careful, safety first, we'll be here waiting. Okay, appreciate that. Um... Part of the problem driving home is the uh, underpass, which is easiest to get um, to and from work, has been closed and continues to be closed until probably the end of November. So the only way over it and through it is um uh, longer routes so it is if that adds time and so forth once it opens it'll probably be better and people get their feet under them so to speak Spelled with a Kiss, Kindle Unlimited by Jessica Rosenberg, second in the Weird Words and Witchcraft. Let's double check release. That was already released. What is up with these? I almost don't wanna click on them if they're gonna be wrong. Let's double check this one. Of course, you guys can always 
check out Harlequin. If you're in the mood for romance, here's one. Laura Griffin, The Last Close Call, they're calling this a romance? We did look at this one under mystery. Well, goodness gracious. Lucy May Lennox, good looking. Kindle Unlimited. August, yeah, I don't trust these. Well, and we're almost out of time. Well, we got a little taste of some things out there. Tomorrow we'll, uh, I'll do a little prepping tonight and uh, have some better options tomorrow. But being Friday, we are, are uh, Options are open. We can look at literary fiction. There's always more cozy mysteries. There seems to be a disturbance in the book reviews. Indeed. These aren't the books you're looking for. <laughs> I appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, at least we're able to show up today, right? We had power. Woo! <laughs> Rebecca, have a great day, everyone. You have a great day, too. Um, so wherever you are, be safe, be warm if you're in cold. Oh, that was interesting. Um, have a cozy day if you're home. If you're out driving around and it's lucky, be safe out that way. All right, take your time tonight. We'll be here. I appreciate that. Be careful driving. Everyone have a good day. Indeed, everybody. So, um, I thank you very, very much. Have a good Thursday. We will meet up again tonight, 6.05, or as near as I can get to it. And uh, remember, if uh, if you're reading a book you're not liking, it's okay to set it down. You're not getting good person points reading it. You don't have to turn on a report. It's just not the right time. It's not a reflection on you. It's not a reflection on the author, usually. Um, it's just not the right time. Pick up something you do like. It's okay. And as the banner says here, don't be a bookworm, be a bookie monster. Um, nom, nom, nom. Take care. God bless. Much love.